And now for a roundup of today's other main headlines, here's Amna Nawaz. In the non-State of the Union news today, the White House played down a federal subpoena seeking a host of documents from President Trump's inaugural committee. Federal prosecutors in New York are investigating who gave the money and what they might have received in return. White House spokeswoman Sarah Sanders called it, quote, hysteria over the fact that Mr. Trump was elected. This doesn't have anything to do with the White House. And I think the uh, biggest focus and the thing that most Americans care about has nothing to do with the inaugural and it has everything to do uh, with what the path forward looks like. Investigators are also looking into whether any foreign donors illegally contributed to the inaugural committee. One of President Trump's judicial nominees voiced regrets today for her past statements on rape, race, and equal rights. Naomi Rao appeared before the Senate Judiciary Committee. Senators on both sides criticized her for writing in college that women bear some blame if they're sexually assaulted while intoxicated. To be honest, you know, looking back at some of those writings and rereading them, I, I cringe at some of the language that I use. You know, I've, I've had a lot of experience since that time um, writing in college, and, and I don't think I would express myself in the same way. Um, these are horrible crimes, and I wouldn't write anything that might be implied to blame a victim or make it less likely for a victim to come forward. Rao currently leads the White House office overseeing deregulation. If confirmed, she'd take the federal appeals court seat held by Brett Kavanaugh before he joined the Supreme Court. Overseas in Afghanistan, Taliban attacks killed nearly 50 people in two northern provinces. A pre-dawn raid killed 26 soldiers and police at an army base in Kunduz province on the outskirts of Kunduz city. Attacks in neighboring provinces killed 21 others. The Taliban have kept up their offensive even amid early stages of peace talks with the U.S. The top U.S. commander in the Middle East says President Trump did not talk to him before announcing American forces will withdraw from Syria. Army General Joseph Vattel testified at a Senate hearing today and was questioned by Maine Senator Angus King. General, were you aware of the president's intention to order the withdrawal of our troops from Syria before that uh, was publicly announced? I, I was not aware of the of the specific that announcement. Uh, certainly, we are aware that he had uh, expressed a, a desire and intent in the past to depart depart Iraq. So you weren't you weren't consulted before that decision was announced. We were not. I was not consulted. Votel's remarks came a day after the Defense Department warned that Islamic State fighters could resurge in Syria after the U.S. withdraws. And this afternoon, the Senate approved a Middle East security bill that warns against any sudden pullout from Syria or Afghanistan. It also calls for new sanctions on Syria. Pope Francis has celebrated the first ever papal mass on the Arabian Peninsula. Some 180,000 people gathered today at a sports stadium in Abu Dhabi, capital of the United Arab Emirates. Francis preached humility in one of the world's richest nations. For Jesus, on the other hand, blessed are the poor, the meek, those who remain just even at the cost of appearing in a bad light, those who are persecuted. He taught us that greatness is not found in having, but rather in giving. Later, the Pope acknowledged for the first time the scandal of priests sexually abusing nuns. He said he's committed to fighting the problem. Millions of people, meanwhile, in Asia and around the world marked the Lunar New Year today. In Taiwan, thousands gathered to pray at a Buddhist temple. In the Philippines, people bought roasted pig, a delicacy, to usher in the Year of the Pig. And all across China, crowds visited temples and took part in festivals. Back in this country, Texas lawmakers complained today the state still has not received Hurricane Harvey recovery funds. The storm did major damage in 2017, and last February, Congress earmarked some $4.4 billion for Texas, but no grants have actually been made. The state's Republican senators, plus 10 House members from both parties, say federal budget bureaucracy is what's standing in the way. An outspoken critic of the World Bank, David Malpass, looks like he'll be President Trump's choice to lead the agency. It was widely reported today that the president will nominate him this week. The World Bank provides loans and projects around the world, but Malpass has complained it's piling up debt without results. Also today, Andrew Wheeler won a Senate committee's approval to be head of the EPA. His nomination now goes to the full Senate. And on Wall Street, a series of strong earnings reports gave stocks another boost.
The Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 172 points to close at 25,411. The Nasdaq rose 54 points and the S&P 500 added 12. Still to come on the news hour, reaction to the president's comments that the U.S. will use a base in Iraq to keep eyes on Iran. A rigorous program prepares black undergraduates to go on to medical school. Plus, SAS Rachel Kadzi Gansa gives her brief but spectacular take on fearlessness.